now we will find the expression for drift velocity and on which other characteristics it depends we have applied an electric field here and that electric field create a force and more is the force more is velocity now we understand in mechanics how a force creates velocity so the first thing force create is acceleration and that acceleration builds up velocity so we will apply these two things here force on a charge particle force on an electron force on an electron f is equal to q into e and in this case it will be minus e into e the charge on electron is minus e this electron okay so this is the force how much acceleration will it create acceleration in this direction in the direction of force acceleration created f upon mass we know this formula acceleration so this will be minus e e upon m this is acceleration now this acceleration is converted into velocity how what is the relation the relation is our very first equation of the kinematics that is velocity is equal to v is equal to u plus at the velocity developed initial velocity acceleration for how much time this acceleration is there this is the thing i want to discuss with you for how much time this acceleration is applicable for that we have uh, imagine a quantity and we have imagine a situation for how much time we have allowed this electron to get drifted here it is drifting this is thermal velocity it was supposed to come here and here what will happen it will collide so it's this velocity will end up we take journey of electron from this point to this point and it has taken certain time let us say t now it will strike this get reflected and it goes like this no collision no collision no collision no collision no collision and here is the atom it will collide now it comes from here reflected and no collision no collision no collision and here is the collision it will strike here this has taken some time this has taken some time this has taken some time so first one word i will introduce to you this path this is a path between two consecutive collision and in between there is no collision so in between it is not colliding it is not doing any work so we will call it free path free path okay this is the length of free path this is the length of free path this is the length of free path there may be certain difference yes so depending upon the nature of the material the atoms may be at different distances but in some the average distance between will be very close in some the average distance will be large so we can always find out mean of these all these paths and we will call it mean free path so how do we define mean free path mean free path is the mean length of path between two consecutive collisions i will write it here for you mean free path okay see mean free path is length of path between two consecutive collisions now it is moving with certain velocity what is that velocity that is thermal velocity so 
for carrying this distance it must be taking some time time is equal to distance divided by speed so here they have a distance and there is certain speed so they must be taking some time let us say this time was t1 this time is t2 this time is t3 and similarly there are time for different collisions okay now when it is colliding here when it is colliding here in between it was free no collision but electric field is applicable on the electron at every instant so when this electron is here it is being pulled by electric field when it is here it is again pulled here now this is coming this way it is again pulled here this way it is again pulled here it is again pulled here it is again pulled here and it is again pulled here and here it strikes so what happens its path become like this and in place of this strike it has done this strike and we say it has drifted how much this much and this path is remember a very minute question sometimes somebody ask that what is the path of electrons inside a conductor when a current is flowing then this path is it a straight line or is it a curve a very minute question so remember when there is no current the path is a straight line when there is electric field applied then this path is not a straight line because of the force in one direction it becomes a parabolic path and it strike here okay that is not of much our concern our concern is this drift how much time this has taken answer is from this point to this point the time taken is t1 again it goes from here it was supposed to go and strike this but in place of going here it has gone here so it has strike here this time is t2 then it goes here that time is t3 so between every two collisions there is certain time elapsed and that time we call this is there is uh, no collision it is moving in the free path so in this time it is not colliding what it is doing it is relaxing because it is relaxing though it is moving but not colliding so we call it relaxation time this time so this is relaxation time what t1 t2 t3 all these are relaxation times now if we make an average relaxation time average relaxation time which will be a property of the material because in different materials this distance average distance will be different so average time will also be different average relaxation time this is a very important characteristic of any material for copper it will be different for aluminium it will be different for different metals it will be different this relaxation time we have allotted a symbol and we will call it tau tau so this tau is average relaxation time and we can take it as the time till no collision takes place if no collision takes place why we need that time we need it that time because during all this process force is applicable on it if force is applicable on it it is getting accelerated 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 acceleration stops why stop it has collided so acceleration was applicable for how much time for relaxation time and what is the relaxation time tau so when i make an equation v is equal to u plus at then what is this t this t is relaxation time because for this much time acceleration is applicable so 
that is relaxation time. Let me write the definition of relaxation time also. Okay, so relaxation time tau is average time between two consecutive collisions and for this time acceleration remain applicated, applicable on this electron. So now we can make an expression of velocity of the electron. This velocity for one electron V1 will be initial velocity of electron u1. What is the initial velocity? This is the velocity u1. Then there will be certain acceleration. So what will be the final velocity? Initial velocity u1 plus acceleration acceleration into time. This. So this time I can write as u1 plus acceleration plus uh, into tau. This acceleration we have already calculated E e upon m. So this I will write E e upon m into tau. This is negative. So this I will put as negative. This is value of a taken from here. Okay. This u1 is what? Initial velocity. But the electron had initial velocity u1 which was basically thermal velocity. Let it be. So this was initial thermal velocity. This is acceleration due to drift force and for this much time. So this makes the final velocity v1 which is resultant of these two velocity. Resultant of this and this is this. Okay. Now, this is for electron number 1. For electron number 2, this we can write tau or we can write it T1. For electron number 2, this is U2 plus E E upon M because of the charge, this will become minus T2. Similarly, we will go up to n electrons and this will be un minus e e upon m into t n. Now, how do we calculate the average velocity? Average final velocity will be sum of all these v1 plus v2 up to v n divided by n. This velocity is known as drift velocity. We have defined it. Now, I place value of V1 from here, then V2 from here, Vn from here. So, what do I get here? V1, U1, U1 minus E, E, M, T1 plus U2 minus E, E, upon m t2 plus this 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 and it will go up to un plus this this tn okay divided by n divided by n now you see u1 plus u2 plus u3 plus un i make this one group if I make it one group, then this will be like this. That average drift velocity Vd is equal to u1 plus u2 up to un. Minus, minus, common is E, e upon m. E, e upon m is common multiplied by T1 plus T2 and this is to be divided by N. Okay. Now U1, U2, U3 this is sum of all the thermal velocities and we have learned that thermal velocity average is 0. So 
if we do u1 plus u2 plus un divided by n, then this will become 0 minus e e upon m and t1 plus t2 up to tn divided by n. Now this expression we have already done. What is this relaxation period for this material? So this we can write as minus drift velocity is equal to minus e e upon m and this thing is tau. This is our expression for drift velocity. So drift velocity is depending on charge on the electron which is a constant, mass of the electron this is a constant. E upon m is a constant. Now drift velocity depends upon electric field and relaxation period for that material. Now for any material this relaxation period is again constant whether current is flowing here, here, here whatever is the electric field. But there is one thing this thermal uh, this is relaxation period this relaxation period depends upon temperature. Relaxation time, relaxation period depends on temperature. Now you must understand how it will change with temperature. If we increase the temperature, the speed will increase. If the speed increase, then the time will decrease. So it is an inverse relation, temperature increase relaxation period decrease temperature increase tau decrease remember it now if we make temperature constant during flow of electron during flow of current we are not changing the temperature if we do not allow the temperature to change then this tau will also be constant if this is a constant, then drift velocity is proportionate to what? Electric field. This way. So, this is complete expression of drift velocity. And which are the variable? Electric field. More is the electric field, more will be drift velocity. Okay. How do we create electric field? We apply potential difference. What is potential difference? Potential difference is E into D. So, this we can write as drift velocity is proportionate to, in place of E, we can write dV by dr, dV by dr, this. So, what is this? Potential difference. So, drift velocity depends upon potential difference. If we make dr as constant, we have taken one certain length of the conductor. So, dr has become constant. Now, more is the voltage more will be drift velocity and this answer your question. If we increase the potential difference, what is effect on drift velocity? Answer, drift velocity will increase with the increase of voltage. Drift velocity will increase with increase of electric field. And what will happen to drift velocity when temperature increase? The answer is when temperature increase, tau will decrease and if tau decrease, drift velocity will decrease. So with voltage and electric field, drift velocity will increase, but with the increase of temperature, drift velocity will decrease. So temperature increase, drift velocity decrease. And one last question, is drift velocity an accelerated motion or it is a uniform motion? By seeing all this, you will say it is accelerated motion. No, mind it. This is accelerated motion. This is not accelerated motion. What is the proof? See here. Drift velocity has an expression which is free of T. What is this T? Time. This expression V is equal to U plus A T. V is equal to U plus AT. This T is variable time. For one second, 
v has one value if you make it 2 second v has more value if you make it 5 second v has more value now i ask you drift velocity what will be drift velocity in first second and in third second you search here you don't find this t you cannot place one you cannot place three that means drift velocity is free of time it does not depend upon time and a velocity which does not change with the time is a uniform velocity it remains constant so remember this property this is again a rare question that drift velocity is drift velocity is a uniform velocity and it is not accelerated motion so this is expression please remember this it is a very very important relation the fundamental relation for current electricity which will be again taken as a base for many more derivations okay so this is drift velocity and now you understand electric current is due to drift velocity but again what is the relation of electric current which was q upon t with drift velocity so that we will do in the next lecture how current depends upon drift velocity what is the relation between the two thank you